Today on Great Places Seen, we travel to Sugar Creek, Ohio, home of New Camp and the annual U Camp Teardrop Rally. Tour my tiny but well appointed trailer and head to the big tents as the annual gathering kicks off with some cheese, food, wine, and song. Stick around, we're going late into the night. But first, a brief rewind. Well, here's my scorecard for uh, two days of essentially boondocking uh, with no hookups. Uh, my battery is in good shape. Obviously, I'm not getting much solar today. Uh, fresh tank, I've got still a third left in there. Very good. Black is low. Gray is fair. And I used uh, about a third of my propane, and that's because I left the Aldi system on all night, the first night. Had I turned it off, I would have used much less propane. The uh, refrigerator is uh, pretty efficient and uh, very happy with the way that that's performed. Uh, on my drive today, uh, it'll stay cold for a couple of hours, so no problem. Everything stays inside, and uh, off we go. I had planned on getting out on another trail this morning, uh, but it's just too wet out there. Um, that leaves uh, another day for New Germany in the future. Uh, I did get some work done here uh, on the laptop in the morning, so it was very nice. Windows open, breeze coming through, airing out the trailer, and uh, getting ready to go. And go we do, on the way to Ohio for the annual gathering of the New Camp Faithful. It's time for U Camp 24. Well, it turned out to be a beautiful day. It started out uh, raining when I left New Germany State Park, uh, but it's a gorgeous day out here on the highway. Uh, about 70 degrees outside as we're getting ready to uh, go to U Camp. Uh, be in Ohio in just a little while. This is the third U camp uh, in a row that I've attended. Um, my wife and I were thinking about uh, doing a third one, and of course she's not here. So uh, I'm I'm going ahead and uh, making the trip. Uh, it'll be a little bit bittersweet, obviously, but uh, U camp is always good. I always learn something new there. Uh, even though this is the second year that I've owned a tab, uh, there's always something to learn about it. And uh, looking forward to uh, getting a little bit of service done, uh, perhaps seeing some people that I saw last year, and uh, learning something new uh, about my trailer. So, on to you, Camp. Kind of keeping tabs on my uh, temperature. Usually, the car runs at 200 degrees without fail. Uh, the oil temp seems to be going up and down quite a bit on this trip, so that's pulling my engine temperature up <laughs> when I'm climbing hills. So I'm just taking it a little easy uh, to make sure that I'm not overheating things a bit. It got really hot yesterday. Of course it was hot outside as well. It was a 90 degree day and going up and down some of those big mountains uh, on the Maryland side uh, the temperature was getting all the way up to the top. Um, it seems pretty reasonable today and uh, not as hot for sure. It's only 70 degrees outside. Through the southwest corner of Pennsylvania and no, it's not the welcome sign I passed a while ago. I'm again in West Virginia, briefly. the option to go 470 west, more direct route to Columbus, or I can go to Wheeling, which I'll do because it's got a cool tunnel. Why not? And there's nobody on this side. Everybody went the other way. Even better. <laughs> Out of the tunnel is the Ohio River which means I'm crossing into Ohio. Hey, 
Heading out, exit zero. The last hour of the drive. It's all familiar road through the lush eastern Ohio farmland. On my way to make a quick stop at my trailer's birthplace. Mothership. No Winkler Plec this year. It was all full. Missed the registration completely because of my wife's illness. So I did get a reservation at Timber Creek. That's down the road a little way. And that's where I'm headed. So it's through Sugar Creek this year, on to Walnut Creek and Timbercrest Campground. I have about another seven miles to go. A nice ride up and down big, rolling, picturesque hills to a beautiful entrance to the campground. This is a simple pull-through stay on a wide open plateau. Winkleplek Grove may be the epicenter of U-Camp, but it does not have full hookups like Timbercrest. Plenty of room available. I'm not sure if everybody has shown up yet. It won't be too long before this fills up. Many typically arrive on Monday. I prefer to settle in early and ease into the week. Well, this is turning into a beautiful evening here in Walnut Creek, Ohio, right next to Sugar Creek and U Camp. Good morning from day one of UCAMP. It's registration day. Well, let's go get registered. Day one is always usually a light day. It's registration and then later on, wine and cheese. This is nice. We've got a 24 hour laundry room and a hydration station. Washers and dryers, hey, perfect. I think I'm gonna clean up everything in my trailer before I go. Just say your name and you're in. I've got my name badge and a tote bag with some surprises inside. After all, you know, you gotta keep these big camping kids happy. Oh, here we are at the park office. Yeah, I gotta pay my bill. <laughs> Ah, uh, plenty of travel brochures for the region. Here we go, perhaps a future trip is in my hand. This is my third year at New Camp, and uh, I thought you'd like to see the goodie bags that I have received over the years. This is year number one, which is a nice little backpack. In fact, this goodie bag is still largely intact. I keep it uh, in the trailer. It has an extra t-shirt in it and some other things, uh, very useful. So that's why everything is still in the bag and still in the camper. Year two, uh, another backpack, a little bit smaller, uh, but this is a good one to carry around camera equipment and that's what I use it for. Um, and also a bottle of water or whatever uh, when I'm out on a hike. So year two bag, uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of uh, in the past year. 
And now for year three, we have the new camp tote bag. Let's see what's inside. New camp will give uh, every camper a registration packet and it has a lot of good information in there. Uh, it tells you all about new camp and, and what's going on. But we want to get to the goodie bag and see what is inside of this thing. So we'll unzip it. it has some nice pouches on the outside. It looks like you could carry uh, a large number of things. Uh, first off, well, look at that. This always comes in handy. We've got a U Camp umbrella. I usually carry a full size umbrella in the trailer, but I like to keep a small one as well. And uh, well, what better umbrella to have in a New Camp trailer than a New Camp umbrella? Thank you very much. We have this lovely little item. Offhand, I don't know what it is, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. It's a new camp cup tumbler. There you go. Perfect for whatever a beverage you'd like to put in it. A hot beverage, a cold beverage, perhaps an adult beverage. You got to have a new camp sticker. For those really hot days, You've got your own personal fan. And yes, batteries are included. Now this is really nice to have for your keys, a new camp key ring. I like this one a lot. This is gonna get some use. And of course, you can't go to the rally without having a new camp t-shirt. This is the 2024 edition. And of course, just so everybody from behind knows, it's from New Camp. So there you have it, the 2024 New Camp Rally bag. I like it. I still haven't figured out what this is. Maybe you can tell me. <laughs> oh, duh. It is a reusable aluminum straw to go with the cup. All right, very eco-friendly. You're thinking New Camp, thank you. Oh, look at that. An Airstream has joined the party. Well, that's not a new camp, but it sure is a nice trailer. Well, I'll go ahead and show you what was in the uh, information packet that uh, New Camp uh, gives the campers every year. You get this nice little booklet here that has all kinds of information inside about what is going on uh, at the rally. Very informative. You get a free raffle ticket. Yes, every year they have a raffle of some great items. Uh, that happens on Thursday night. They say it starts with wine and cheese night <laughs> on Monday. So that's tonight. Uh, we'll see. Well, I've got uh, a complimentary free ticket here and uh, I can buy more if I like. But you know what? I'm just going to let it roll and take my chances and see what, what happens. This is a tradition. Getting your big free Amish donut. These donuts are huge. I'll show you a little bit later, and you may have seen it in a previous video. Oh my goodness. This will last you the day. It's a meal. It's a donut. It's big. New Camp has put out their own app. That's right. You buy a trailer, you can get an app as well. Every year, all the campers get to vote on a, a couple of uh, awards, like Ace of Accessory Awards. Globe Trotter Award, Master of Modification Award, Creative Camper Combo Award, Caring Camper Award, and Greatest Graphic Award. Fill out your ballots and see who wins. And of course, New Camp Ambassadors Mandy and Kendrick hold their own rallies across the country uh, for New Camp. New Camp sponsors it. And uh, I have not gone to one yet, but I plan on doing so. Oh, and don't forget the cheese. You can get free cheese downtown. Yeah, at the Swiss Village Bulk Food Store. It's a really cool place. Probably one of the most colorful stores you'll see anywhere. It's Monday, day one of U Camp. And as you can see, it's a rather overcast day, uh, very cool and breezy. Uh, not really a lot going on today other than registration. Uh, of course, later tonight is wine and cheese and, well, 
can't miss that. So in the meantime for today, I think what I'm going to do is take care of a few chores around the trailer and also I'm going to probably go into town, get a little bit of food, but I don't need a lot of food because hey, it's you camp. They do feed you here and feed you well. So uh, with those chores done, that's pretty much going to be my day one and meet my neighbors. I've met a lot of good people around here so far. Well, I may have told you before, this is a 2022 Tab 400. It's a boondock uh, edition, and uh, that's back when they were making what they now call the classic, or the regular version, and the boondock, which uh, has more aggressive tires, a, a beefed up suspension, and it rides a little bit higher so you can go uh, off grid. But uh, it's, a, it's been a really nice trailer. I've enjoyed it a lot and uh, always learn something at U-Camp about my trailer. So I'm excited to find out uh, what new things uh, I can find out about taking care of my trailer, modifying it, etc. And uh, then getting back on the road later this year. I of course sanitize my tanks every year, but uh, I also like to carry some fresh water from home. So I have in this milk crate a five gallon uh, collapsible water carrier and I've already used some of the water out of it, but uh, I like to put it into a uh, one gallon jug and uh, then take that into the trailer. Well, here at U-Camp, I'm rather spoiled because at the Timbercrest campground, I have full hookups, which means I can use appliances. Uh, my wife liked to have some of the creature comforts of home, and so here we have appliances that fit the trailer. I have a uh, small water kettle, a Keurig coffee maker, a microwave, which actually we didn't have when my wife was here. Um, story behind that, the uh, neighbor was selling this Amazon microwave for $10. So I didn't get the microwave option that normally fits up here, which means I have all this space for storage, which is just invaluable in a trailer this size. But I have this little microwave which stows neatly down in here and of course I can put a, a couple of pots inside of that for storage. So for $10, heck yeah I got a microwave and my little jelly bean toaster. I love this toaster. This toaster does everything and it looks cool. I think it looks cool. So with full hookups, yeah. I'm spoiled this week. I have uh, an, an actual kitchen set up. Oh, and there's an air fryer down there too. So I can pretty much make anything I want uh, food wise while I'm here. Although again, it's U camp, so I'm gonna be fed uh, quite well. But uh, for those rare occasions when I have a, a full hookup situation, uh, here's, a, here's a full kitchen that I have at my disposal. Not too bad. And not that I think I have any issues with my appliances. I always leave them unplugged. You can see the uh, service people here are circling the lot looking for uh, the customers who have signed up for service during U-Camp. You just would not believe the amount of storage space under the sink. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, things in here now, but all of those appliances actually fit in here. Yeah. I can, I can put, and there's the air fryer in the back. So, oh, and then I also have a, uh, a small food processor here as well. So while I'm giving you this little uh, mini tour inside the uh, trailer, uh, here's my currently messy <laughs> dinette table, but I wanted to show you what is underneath this cushion here. These just come out and push this up and there is a nice storage area right down here. And so I've got uh, all sorts of cleaning supplies, sponges and bags. I have a, a car vac right there. It's a 12 volt car vacuum so I can plug it into the 12 volt outlet that comes with the trailer and vacuum it out. Very simple. This little corner was always kind of a, a bit of a dumping ground for 
bags and whatever we were carrying and uh, I would kind of wedge myself into the corner here and, and sit at the dinette which was fine uh, but now uh, a couple of blankets here on the uh, corner uh, for those really cold nights back here I've got uh, some storage underneath and uh, these boxes have uh, various bits of uh, small electronic gear in there or, or um, this has like all of the uh, campground uh, passes that I had uh, car tags and things like that um, sort of my little camping memento box and this black bag has all of the uh, wiring equipment that I need for my mini studio I think that was some sort of uh, makeup travel case or something that, that my wife had that I've repurposed. And then back here is a, another storage cubby area. And this is where my miniature studio is residing. I still need to kind of configure things. I have all the parts to it. I just need to figure out how I want to set it up and configure it. Although I'm going to have to move everything uh, for tomorrow morning because here's my glycol tank for my Aldi system. Uh, that's going to get flushed out and so the uh, techs will need access uh, to that as well as under the bed to get to the Aldi system uh, proper. Along the top rail I keep this uh, collapsible chair, seat, uh, stool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this was something that uh, I heard about at a prior U camp. Um, I also have a box for my uh, weather station. That's where it, it stays in storage. Uh, my U-Camp goodie bags from years past. Up here a couple of uh, bags to use for shopping or whatever. I keep my level here for when I'm setting up uh, camp. I also have um, some placemats up in here, another uh, shopping bag. And a few odds and ends uh, back in here. I keep hats up here, some of my prior uh, U-Camp badges. Uh, also uh, a wind-up radio there. So now that I'm essentially sitting on uh, this side of the dinette, then this side becomes the uh, bag storage area <laughs> in full. In the first two years of ownership, the only real issue I've had with this trailer is the front screen shade combo broke. The shade would not fold up properly, and uh, so I asked New Camp to replace it. Uh, the dealer who was close to me in the area would not fix it because, well, they would fix it, but they wouldn't schedule me an appointment because, first of all, they didn't sell me the trailer. They had other customers in line. There was a really long wait. And so I just did the work myself. It was quite simple. All I had to do was remove these end caps, unscrew the old shade, screw in the new shade, and replace the caps. It was that simple. And I had the whole thing done in maybe 20 minutes. The only issue is, and I can adjust it because there are string adjustments up at the top, is that this shade will not stay up all the way uh, when I'm traveling. And so I have a bungee cord up here and just simply latch it into the top of the shade there and it stays up. Now I'll say over time, the, uh, the shade itself has kind of loosened up a bit and uh, will stay up as you see on its own. So really not much adjustment necessary. That's it. That's the only thing I've had to deal with in, in two years of ownership. That's pretty darn good. The only other thing that I'm having done is the uh, glycol flush tomorrow. Uh, $533 to have that done. I'm certainly going to watch closely and, and see what they do. I've heard of other people doing it themselves, although it, it seems like it's not something that is uh, easily done uh, by owners. It's better just to have the, the pros do that. Uh, and I've also heard that uh, that $533 charge is pretty good. Uh, dealers are charging upwards of $1,000 for a glycol flush. So, okay, if that's all I have to do uh, once every two years, uh, I can handle that. And I will 
also uh, take care of my wheel bearings after this trip. Repacking the wheel bearings is uh, pretty straightforward on these. Also, they use the uh, Dexter system, so all I have to do is basically take that cap off and uh, make 15, 20 pumps with a grease gun and uh, just replace the grease. Uh, but it is, it is good to take everything apart, take a look at the brakes and such. Uh, and so that's going to be one of my maintenance issues after this trip. Again, I mean, if that's all I've had to deal with in two years, that's a pretty darn good trailer. Uh, well built as advertised, and that's why I got a new camp to begin with. Uh, the reputation was really good, the resale values were high, and you kind of got to figure, well, if the resale values are high, it must be a good trailer. And it is. As you may have seen in some of my other videos, yeah, I do throw up a uh, makeshift TV antenna just to see what stations are in the area. And uh, well, there are a few viewing opportunities here, although I'm not going to be watching TV, especially here at UCAMP. But it's kind of fun to see what is in the area. And uh, well, you never know. I mean, sometimes you want to catch the local news, check out uh, their weather forecast even though I can see everything on the phone um, some areas you know where I don't have service necessarily uh, I can pick up a signal and uh, get weather that way but for the most part this is uh, just out of curiosity I carry with me uh, a couple of old cell phones and uh, they are packed with music and also apps uh, for my trailer so while I don't listen to the radio that much, I do keep it in Bluetooth mode, and so I'm constantly playing music off of one of my old phones. Here are a couple of the apps that I keep on my phone, uh, trailer-specific apps. This is the Echo Smart Control. This is my brake controller. Of course, I keep this mounted near the steering wheel, and uh, with it, I can control the brakes uh, on the trailer. Of course, that is <laughs> very important. Uh, I also have my propane tank uh, monitor, and this tells me how much propane is in my tank, roughly. Um, I'm just under 30%, and uh, that's 70% usage in two years. So you can see I don't go through a lot of propane. In fact, most of it I went through just on the uh, last weekend when I was uh, boondocking in the Western Maryland mountains. So I'll get my propane tank refilled on this trip to UCAMP. And also uh, my Victron controller. Victron controller. Oh, look, here are all my uh, <laughs> neighbors around here. I can see uh, many other tab controllers, but this one is mine. And of course it monitors my uh, solar charging and uh, not getting a whole lot of solar today because it's, it's cloudy. But, uh, you know, my battery is fully charged, obviously, because I'm, I'm plugged in. But, you know, it gives me uh, the history, trends. I can, I can see how my power usage has been. Yeah, very handy. This is the uh, pretty well-documented UCAMP wet bath, uh, described by some as the best wet bath on the market. It is pretty darn good. Uh, I added the uh, teak shower mat there and that is really helpful makes a big difference because all the water in the tray stays underneath it this dries out exceptionally fast literally within minutes so it's nice to have a dry area to stand on uh, in your wet bath shower but uh, again it uses the aldi system uh, it's hot water on demand so uh, it heats up very quickly plus the shower itself or the bathroom i should say is heated through the Aldi system. So you have a, a warm bathroom and warm water. Uh, this was the fold down sink that they uh, included up through the 2022 models. 
The newer models have a round sink in the corner, a porcelain sink, and uh, to create a little bit more space between that and the toilet. Although I find I have absolutely no problem using it this way, and I kind of like the fold-down sink. Uh, it drains well. It, uh, I think it's cool. It just reminds me of an airplane. Uh, you even have a window here if you like to look out while you're you're sitting there. I always keep the shade up. I've never had it down. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're boondocking and, and in the middle of nowhere, sure, put the window down. Who cares? Leave the door open. Uh, plenty of shelf storage space up here. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, a lot of items uh, from home that I had duplicated that I have now uh, stocked in the trailer. So I've, I've gone and arranged everything kind of in order of, of what things are and what they do. Um, I've gotten uh, some little bins, plastic bins to hold, and, and I'll probably uh, put some kind of a, uh, maybe a, a mesh screen or something up there just for aesthetics, but functionality, it's great. And it has this shower curtain, uh, which uh, people often ask, what is this hook behind the, the, the toilet here? Well, that's to hold your, your shower curtain when it's not in use. And basically it just wraps all the way around when you use the uh, shower. It works really well. And whatever this thing is made of, it dries exceptionally fast. The only issue I found with it is uh, it, it goes down to the floor pan. So if you have some standing water down here, the, the bottom of the shower curtain will pick up that water. So after I shower, I uh, push the, the little teak uh, mat back so that the shower curtain is resting on that and then it dries out very quickly. Um, hey, new camp. What you could do, if you want to make a little extra, is uh, sell a teak mat like that, that fits the tub of the shower. There's a thought. But this one works really well. I invested uh, maybe $70 in it, which was, I thought, a little bit much, but it was well worth the investment. And of course, a uh, place to hang your towels and a lot of people replace their fans. They'll, they'll, they'll put the uh, regular Fantastic fan uh, up in here and then replace this with a, uh, a Max Air. I'm fine with what I have. Uh, for me, this works just fine. I, I have no issue with it, uh, especially when I'm taking a shower. This vents out uh, the air pretty quickly, and uh, especially now that I'm on my own, heck, I just keep the door open with the curtain across, and uh, it's fine. Absolutely no issue at all. And uh, the curtain, of course, covers this, so all of this woodwork is uh, well protected as you're taking a shower. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, new camp wet bath, and uh, I added this suction cup holder for uh, shampoo. I don't store anything in there because the weight of it, as I'm going down the road, will pull this off. Uh, this I think I got at Ikea, uh, but it works well. And that's about the only thing I've added to the bathroom other than this little uh, step trash can, which I don't use. I use it more as a door prop than I, I do for anything else, and I'm a little bit uh, divided as to whether or not to keep this or or uh, get rid of it, but uh, I, I think I need to use it more as a trash can <laughs> than I have been. But there you go, looking out the bathroom with a view. I like the fact too that it, it has uh, two lights. It has this ring light up here, which is very bright, and then it also has this backlit light with a nice big switch. And really, most of the time when I'm using the bathroom, I can find that in the dark very easily. It's more than enough light. And I think it looks pretty cool. I think New Camp did a really nice job with its lighting throughout the trailer. You get a mirror, and it's great for the vertically challenged. My wife was five foot one and a half inches tall. She said she worked very hard for that one half inch and had no problem using this mirror. And of course, the three way refrigerator, which is not offered anymore. But I can run this on electricity, battery, or propane. 
as you can see for this trip uh well stocked with healthy food <laughs> i don't need much because i'm at u camp they feed me here and the bed is uh quite simple i've heard it described as a small queen i'm not really sure the size uh since it's now me well i keep extra blankets in the corner clothes bag and a uh, duvet cover which is uh, very simple and just throw it in the washing machine real quick uh, with uh, sheets underneath and nice i also have a, a little cubby back here so you can keep your tissues back here your remotes uh, you can charge up your phone very handy a couple of nice reading lights up here as well you know they start off with blue light and then you can go to a brighter reading light. Now I thought it was kind of funny having two, of course one for each person if, if uh, you and your partner are back here, but uh, being so close to each other, yeah, you're gonna see the light <laughs> regardless if one is on and the other is off. But it's a nice little amenity. Uh, my TV and I have uh, extra cables in here set up so that I can hook up a computer. So I can actually use this as a large computer screen if I like. Uh, just sit in bed and uh, do some work that way or just use the laptop as it is. and uh, Or check out uh, the TV stations in my area like I tend to do. I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed this Stargazer window. It is absolutely huge. And the view that you get laying in bed, well, you can see on a nice day, yeah, you can see all the stars above you or the trees. And these are, uh, this is where I get many of the views from in my videos out of this back window. It opens up. I really love this window. And just so you know, it also serves as your emergency exit. There is a surprising amount of storage up here. Uh, in fact, I've even put in a little Lazy Susan so that I, I can get to more things in the back. Uh, but uh, yeah, great for spices or coffee or, you know, spare water bottle is back in there. Um, it's a nice little pantry. And then of course, these two cabinets. Shelves that I put in uh, at the last U camp a year ago, adjustable shelves, and I can pack a lot of things in there as you see. Uh, lots of plates, food containers, and food, uh, mugs. It holds just about everything. And the nice little locks on there keeps everything. And these hinges are great. Very sturdy. Well, that's why they used them. Again, all of this LED lighting within the trailer really lights it up well along the edges, the ceilings. It gives you a, a sense of spaciousness in here, which it does have a lot of room for a small 18-foot trailer. This also has uh, storage under the bed as well. I keep the uh, trailer cover underneath. You can see how much room it has there. It's a lot. But that's the cover that I use uh, for the trailer when it's in storage over the winter. I think I'm just going to make some room for it uh, at home so that I can use this storage area for other things when I'm out on the road. Well, good thing there wasn't much scheduled for today. It's turned into a rather cool, raw day with uh, some mist, light rain. I don't even see it on the radar. Well, for lunch, I think I'm just gonna have a couple of simple bean burritos. Very easy to make. I have a little bit of uh, Asiago cheese. It's a very hard cheese, so it, it stays fresh long. Sprinkle a little in there. And I'll add a, a little bit of sauce from a uh, well-known taco place. <laughs> Just going to put it in the microwave for a minute. 
and fold it up. And there we go. One bean burrito. Flower shells are great to have on hand. I mean, you can make a burrito out of them. You can make a wrap out of just about anything. You can put all, almost anything on one of these and have a meal. Heat it up or have it just the way it is. You can store them at room temperature or you can keep them a little longer in the refrigerator. That was so good. I think it's time for another one. Oh yeah. Voila. Well, the messiest part about it is pretty much just cleaning up the spoon. I'm gonna make more of a mess having a hard boiled egg. See what I mean? I also bring along something to drink, but when I'm finished with it, I reuse the bottle as a water bottle. And I also usually put one up in the freezer. That helps keep the freezer cold. The refrigerator doesn't work as hard. And if for some reason the refrigerator stops, well, it'll stay cold longer. Finally, it's time for wine and cheese. It's a great time as camper musicians coalesce into a talented band. No one here will find that it's cold enough to chill the cheese and wine. What happens under this tent stays under the tent. Well, mostly. With you camp underway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tales of tiny trailers.